Hey folks, Jonathan here. It's Saturday morning. So we get out of the sun here. Nice and bright, early morning. Uh, spent a couple hours visiting with the grandson this morning. So uh, we are putting this 6.0 back in my 2005 HD 2500. And got it sitting in. Just got to get the rest of the stuff hooked up up top. I think the only thing I got to do underneath is uh, the ground wire running from the battery over there. And... Uh, Everything else is done under there, exhaust, uh, starter, torque motor bolts, bell housing bolts, uh, motor mounts, everything. I put two new motor mounts on it, and they're not cheap. They're, they're cheap if you can buy them online, but they're right at $50 a piece if you buy them here local. So, But I needed them. I couldn't, uh, didn't want to wait for them. So. Anyway, uh, hopefully we'll have this thing up and running today. I figured I'd do a little bit of video today. Uh, Noah should be here shortly, and... Uh, Another friend of mine from down the road that's gonna that's working off that rear end. He uh, he actually came up here last night and helped me uh, hook a lot of this stuff up and get this set down in. And you know this has been an on and off project. I think we worked on it Sunday, and of course you've seen where me and or Noah and I mostly Noah, but Noah and I pulled the engine out of the box truck. So uh, anyway, I'll have this back going. This is my my boat boat pulling truck. So I've been without this truck for. Uh, almost longer than I, I want to admit, but it's been uh, a year and a half, two years that I've I've let my truck sit and just drove the 57 International. And it, the only thing it really hindered me on was uh, basically going fishing, I guess. I mean, because I, I really don't drive it that much anyway. Uh, I got the camper in the back. I like to go camping, but we haven't had a chance to do that in a while anyway, so. But anyway, this is a 6.0 liter. Here's my old engine. This is the one that was running with low oil pressure and we may later on, we'll put this up and uh, pull the cam out and see if that was the issue. Uh, had oil pressure at the lower end, just didn't have good oil pressure at the top end. And did not run it enough to hurt anything in the engine. I never heard a tick or a noise or a sound. And uh, some of you may have heard it on video but uh, before, but, uh, still runs great i mean it's a shame to pull it out but you know that uh it would have would have got nothing but worse and we didn't want to take a chance on that so uh anyway we're going to do that today uh, i think we're gonna get the blue 91 chevrolet up here and go ahead go ahead and pull the uh the rear end out of it and probably the transmission transfer case and hopefully we can see if that 208 case will fit on it today and we'll try to videotape as much as that as we can. And uh, great pine straw. Anyway, so uh, we're going to keep it this. We'll uh, we'll get this knocked out here in just a little bit. We don't have a lot more to do. Most of this is just plug and play. You know, roll on with it. And uh, and my batteries done went bad on me. Uh, 11th month of 2013. So if you ever wonder about you know battery, if you'll look. Sometimes these stickers are on the side and stuff, but that's what the manufacturer date on the battery. Let's see if you can see that, 11 to 13. So it's, uh, well, it's time to be out, I guess. I mean, four years old or four and a half years old. So they don't last forever. That's one thing people don't understand. They think a battery's going to last forever in a car, and it just don't happen. And temperature changes usually when I ran into, a, you know, most of the battery issues with uh, the motor clubs and towing. You know, when you either go from really hot to really cold or from really cold to really hot. And uh, that seems to happen every other week here in North Carolina. So, All right, let me get back on this, and we're going to keep at it, and hopefully Noah will be here in a little bit. All right. Okay, we got the rear end out for Joseph. And we've got a transfer case transmission out. Getting ready to see if this 208 case will fit with this 241C. 240. Yeah, 241C. This one's got the dry shaft on the driver's side, and we're going to try the 208 on the passenger side. And we'll show you what happened. Okay, different for sure. Of course, the bolt patterns are the same, but this one's got a lot, lot more spline, a lot bigger spline. So we're going to have to figure out something different. But uh, we'll let you know when we do. All right, folks, truck's done. Motor's in. Everything's finished up. Put a new battery in it. And time to get her cleaned up. But runs good, no problems. Carrying good old pressure. 
Definitely needs some fuel in it. Oil pressure stays at 40 when it warms up, operating temperature. So this one's all done. I'm glad of that. Now I can uh, actually hook to my boat and go fishing here. But uh, working on, uh, we pulled that rear end out for Joseph yesterday and uh, the transmission transfer case. And of course I pulled it in half and I showed you what the deal was with it, but I'm fixing to show you something on it. But uh, we're actually helping him put that rear end. He's helped me out so much working and, and uh, he really don't have no place to do it. So I figured we'd just swap it out here. So we went from a uh, 10 bolt to a 14 bolt, but uh, I'll show you that. Yeah, okay, put a new cable on the wrecker. Ordered two and only got one in. We're gonna try these new hooks out. I'll let you know what I think of them when I get to use them. But uh, a lot of people are using them now. But uh, gotta wait on my other cable, but I'm gonna get this one on this, this tractor. One thing we're doing, get a rear end. Had to change the emergency rope cables over, or have to. So that's working out. And I picked up a couple wraps, uh, one really bad one. I'll show you the pictures of it. Uh, Nissan Rogue, but I had never seen a Rogue One Star Wars limited edition. First for me. But anyway, been pretty busy with Rex and Poe and uh, another one I got in the other day, but uh, so we worked on the international rollback yesterday too. Uh, I had to put a pressure relief valve, got it fixed. Uh, thought maybe the governor was bad on it, but it wasn't. It turned out to be the pressure relief valve, so that was a good thing. Got it taken care of, and then uh, worked on a little bit of everything. But it was glad to get my white truck done. But uh, we're going to try to get his truck finished up when we run up here and give him a hand with it. And uh, we should uh, have a good productive weekend anyway. All right. Okay, on this truck, the one that was the pressure relief valve was popping on. I had a pressure relief valve down here where the gauge is at that was a 140. And what was happening is this thing, I put the gauge in. It went up to about 130, 135. And then the uh, governor kicked in, the compressor quit pumping. And then uh, about 90 pounds it would kick back on. So it was working perfect. I've got a pressure relief valve on top here. So I really didn't need to anyway. So I went ahead and uh, just decided to leave the gauge in it. And it should work out fine. Now, I've got a little leak on my where my air chuck goes from my air hose. But they really need to change it out. And that'll sort of hold a little better air pressure. When it's sitting, I mean, it still it holds good. Uh, when it's running, you know, it's just, it'll leak down after a while. Anyway, so that's finished. Worked on my control valves. I'm, you know, when I built this truck, I used, I had used parts. Everything was about used. So I'm actually going to replace these control valves here really soon. Uh, I don't even know what they're off of. I think I bought them out of the junkyard for scrap weight. But uh, I've got a leak issue. Not a big one or a bad one. It just, you know, drips a little bit and I don't like it. And I've wanted to change it for a long time. So I think we'll uh, we'll get another set of control valves and get on here. I don't have a wheel lift or anything on this one. Don't really care to put one on it. So uh, we just uh, run it without one. Run three control valves. Works out really well. Uh, I put a tire on this side, used one. And so we're about ready to uh, get another quarter fender on it. And I thought I had located one, but I haven't. So I need a quarter fender and then uh, we'll go ahead and strip this down. I think we're just gonna paint the whole truck. So I've got a dent right here that uh, needs taken care of. This guy was carrying a piece of uh, I-beam on a forklift and it 
come over and hit it here just enough to dent it and uh, that guy was me and you know it happens but uh no all this was done that last blowout I had on that Goodyear tire I had on there so so I think that's about it everything else is done on it I think I'll put up probably gonna put some glow plugs in it before the winter and I've got the simulators I want to put on it and we're gonna repaint the bed repaint all the black on the frame and everything get it all cleaned back up and uh, truck's been sitting kind of hate it's been sitting it is what it is okay Joseph's truck's done the only real thing we had to do modifying wise was to weld the uh, the little perches on for the uh, sway bar they wasn't on it so everything's done he's drove it we bled the brakes and it's ready to go so he'll be driving it tomorrow to work now we're in the middle of putting the new airbag on my truck so let me get on it okay I had to replace one of the airbags on here uh, the old one was pretty pretty rough, but I had to actually had an inside tire blow out on the inside and hit the airbag and put a Pretty bad nick in it. So I ordered it and I'm replacing it now trying to get it finished up so Now to get this done. That'll probably wrap up our weekend. Anyway, we get on Say bye Noah. Bye Say bye Joseph. Bye. All right. We're done. It's late Bye Okay, I almost forgot to tell you what I learned about these uh, transfer cases here. Uh, one on the right is the 241, the one on the left is the uh, 208, and I need a 32 spline for this one. And what I found out was is if a 208 came out from behind a 400 turbo or the, what is it, 235 or 265, I can't remember, if it came out behind the granny gear 4 speed, uh, transmission it would have a 32 spline but if it come out behind a 700 r4 like this one does it's got a 27 spline so all I've got to do is buy the piece that goes in the front of the transfer case that's got 32 splines and uh, the uh, the price on it is $60 and then I can just tear the case down and go ahead and change it out and that case will fit right on that five speed and, uh, and I know that the early 5 speeds, uh, it may be a get rag and not an NB3500, but uh, whatever it is, it is. It, you know, it, it's, you, you see people talking about both of them, and they say they didn't change to a NB3500 until a couple years later. But, uh, but either way, it was a good transmission. We don't plan on being hard on it anyway, so it should hold up just fine. But anyway, that's our plan, $60, and we'll get that piece. We'll get it in the transfer case, and then we'll... Uh, We'll be able to put that in and uh, get that truck uh, back driving like it should be. But uh, all right, bye.